all that's gone away at the end, if you get um, I got into cars through my dad. My dad, uh, Roger, was a well-known car customizer back in the 1970s, and I would spend my summer holidays in the workshop, basically handing back tools uh, to him if he was laying underneath a car or getting something out of the toolbox, cleaning it with an oily rag and putting it back in his tool chest. Great days. My first car was a Mini. It was a uh, hearing aid beige, a uh, little Mini 1000 that I bought uh gjj 550j i love that little car drove it everywhere and uh, that's why i still love minis today the first car i sold as a wheeler dealer was my little mini i uh, uh had a little accident in it or dare i say my sister's neighbor reversed into the car uh, it owed me 300 pounds i got 275 pounds uh, of the insurance company. So with that £275, I put mini lights on it, changed the interior, repaired the dent and uh, sold it for £800. And I thought, oh, I like that. I'm quite good at this. I was 17 at the time and thought, well, I'm just going to do this for the rest of my life. And I still am. I found cars in every continent around the world, I suppose the weirdest ones that spring to mind are uh, the Lamborghini Uraco that was frozen in that garage in Poland, uh, locked in ice. Uh, that was a really good find. There was a big car collection there, uh, but Lamborghini was, uh, was one that stands out to me. But there's been many over the years. I found cars that have been laying in a barn in Sonoma recently with a tarpaulin over it, and it's been there for the last 25 years. And uh, it surprises me that these cars are still out there. You pull the cloth off and there's a Porsche laying underneath. Yeah, brilliant. So YouTube channels, I absolutely love them. I spend a lot of time uh, looking at YouTube channels, especially car people. Uh, I like to see what they're saying about cars and uh, I'm always learning. I wanna pick up some advice off people on some of the repairs they're doing and I lean upon uh, YouTube uh, to go and find out, you know, what's happening out there in the car world and what other people are thinking of uh, repairs or any tips or advice. Uh, and I always tell anyone who's buying a car, uh, if they are buying a car and they want to know what to look out for in that particular car, I generally point them to YouTube because it's a, a great resource. It, your chances are on YouTube, you're going to find someone who's been through the problem and repaired the problem uh, before you've even bought the car. So um, it's always a good resource. Yes, I've got Clarkson, Hammond and May stories, if you like. Jake, me and James, we worked together on a series called Driven many, many years ago. Uh, and uh, I've got very fond memories of uh, hanging around with James. We went to, uh, uh, well, we've been basically everywhere together. But I remember fondly going to Italy to drive the whole Ferrari product range. That was a really good trip. I also taught him how to fly radio control aircraft. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Clarkson, I've known Jeremy for years as well. Uh, I've helped him host these uh, charity events in the past, which has always been fun. And uh, um, I, we've had a few drinks at a bar uh, every now and then, and that's that's been absolutely fantastic. And as for Richard, me and Richard go back to uh, very early days when he was the Renault press officer. And uh, I had an amazing trip with Richard uh, out to Marrakesh driving the Renault Scenic RX4. Uh, where we bonded and uh, become very good car buddies. And uh, it was it was because of that, um, it meant that I could have a connection with him and help him get his job in Top Gear. So the future of Wheeler Dealers is huge. It's massive and it's looking uh, bigger and brighter than ever. I'm delighted to say because, you know, the show's been running now. We're in our 18th year. Uh, 2002, we started, you know, thinking about the show. Here we are, 2020, coming into 2021. And, um, I, you know, it's not often somebody can say that after all these years that a TV show is growing from strength to strength. And that's exactly what it's been doing. And uh, that's what it's going to continue to do. Plus, it's a chance now 
because we've got nothing else to prove in terms of how the show is and feels and looks, uh, I think we can start experimenting a bit and start changing things up and um, and try new things. And I'm, I'm very excited about that. But yes, we've got a, a massive future. So spin-off shows. Uh, last year I did Dream Car, which was a chance for me to give back uh, with my new mechanic, Elvis, uh, from his Formula One background. Elvis is just a, an amazing guy, a brilliant mechanic. He certainly knows his stuff. It's a mic drop. Uh, moment when I introduce Elvis, who took Lewis Hamilton to his first Formula One world title. Uh, you don't get much better than that. Uh, so it's a real chance for me to give back uh, to the motoring world and uh, to do something nice, not for me, uh, but for them, for those lovely people that we have on Dream Car. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing another series of that and working again with Elvis, uh, very much so. Plus uh, more spin-offs. you know, Mike Brewer's World of Cars uh, was fantastic. I'd like to do more of those. Uh, it all comes down to time and uh, when we can squeeze these things in because we're very busy making wheeler dealers at the moment. Uh, but never say never. I'm always excited to try new projects. Yes, fortunately, I've got quite a nice car collection. Uh, sort of gone crazy with Porsches recently. So we've got a few 911s. We've got a 550 Spider, a 912e. A Porsche Taycan, just sold a 356, but I'll get another one. Uh, a 1959 MGA, a Citroen SM, three Mini Cooper S's. I know that's kind of greedy, but I like them. Um, plus there's a few other things dotted around, uh, which are really good. Uh, so yeah, nice collection of, uh, of cars. What car do I most regret selling? Well, that'd be the last one I sold, I, I would say. Um, yeah, there's a, a car I recently sold, actually, a 356, 1963, 356B, uh, showing 25,000 miles. Uh, I wanted to sell it because I never really wanted one. Uh, but then I found this, it was a barn find, and now I've sold it. I sort of regret selling it because um, it was such a good car and it was so perfect. It had so many great little details on that car that are hard to find today. And they've only come to light since I've sold it. So, um, yeah, I regret selling that one. Wow, there's been so many. I would say for me, it's a, I can't, there can't be one. There has to be a few. Uh, they would be, I love the Austin Healey 3000. I thought that car was just magic. It was everything that summed up the best of British. I love that car. Uh, I love the Escort RS Cosworth. Uh, it was Ant's first show. We did something remarkable with it and still being spoke about today with the third wing. And um, the Lamborghini Araco, you know, celebrating Ed's 50th birthday in Bologna in that car across the Dolomite Mountains. Magical. Absolutely loved it. The worst car, well, that's an easy one. It's the show that we all want to just be lost and that was the Suzuki SJ410. That comes from a time when we were uh, just inventing wheeler dealers and trying to work out what wheeler dealers was. And uh, we made some mistakes and a mistake was me allowing the production company uh, to tell me that we had no choice. We had to buy the car in front of me, the Suzuki, because we'd run out of time. And uh, it was a disaster from start to finish. So uh, yes, lose that episode. Uh, right, so I've got a review uh Clarkson Hammond and May's cars um well let's talk about James first of all I would have thought that would have been more Richard's car than James's car because Richard loves these Porsches uh yeah great great car Carrera S uh love it uh eases in white kind of looks weird that James drives a white Carrera S it's not what I expect them to be in you know I would expect them to drive something that's got velour and brown on the outside, not something that's white and looks like it's, you know, driven by somebody with straightened hair. Kind of weird, but great car, uh, worth every penny, one of the least depreciating cars in the world. Uh, so what it's worth is probably just a few grand less than what he paid for it. And the second car is Richard Hammond's, I think it looks like in the picture, Fastback Mustang. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's in Hunter Green with some stripes over it. I've had uh, quite a few Mustangs in my time, so I can tell you what that car's like. It's brilliant to own. 
uh, easy to fix, easy to work on, uh, abundance of parts and supplies, so really easy to maintain and look after. I think they're a great car, absolutely amazing. Uh, Richard's cars today, probably somewhere around 25 grand, uh, easy, uh, plus it, it just depends what somebody wants to pay for it. Jeremy Clarkson's got an Alfa Romeo GTV6. Again, uh, I've had several of these, amazing car. Uh, like Jeremy, I'm sure he's gonna say the same words as me. Uh, if you're a car guy, you need to own an Alfa Romeo. It's as simple as that. Once in your life, just own one. So you just get to know exactly what pure design, engineering, uh, the the DNA of what makes us enjoy cars is buried in that car, in the in that car. It's just amazing the way those cars make you feel. So uh, yeah, Jeremy Clarkson's Alfa Romeo GTB6. Uh, today, the prices are on the ascent. So uh, you can put your thumb in the air with that one and guess what it's going to make. If it was to run for an auction, it only needs two people to understand how good those cars are and fight over it and uh, it make a healthy number. His one looks particularly good, I must say. It looks very nice. Uh, Ferrari. Barn find. V8. Dedicated. Talent. The Grand Tour. All three.